Hey everybody, Rick over at Building Controls Group, and today we're going to be going over another tech tip video, and today's video is going to be regarding re-imaging a SD card on a JS8000. A um, couple different scenarios why this might happen and why you have to do it. Uh, we'll go over those first, and then we'll actually get to the process of re-imaging the SD card. So let's uh, talk about some of those process, some of those reasons why something goes wrong and you have to actually re-image this SD card. Um, what I have seen is the number one reason why an SD card stops working is because someone's tampered with the file system via FTP. Um, typically, FTP can be dangerous because if you start messing around deleting files or changing files in the um, SD card, it uh, they can start causing signature errors. Um, we've had people put SD cards in their uh, laptop thinking that they can get the files off there. You cannot do that. This is a encrypted SD card, and as soon as you start tampering with that file system, things go wrong. Uh, another more rare event, but it does happen, is power outages can cause corruption on SD cards. Um, and uh, we have had some instances where uh, an SD card is beyond recovery, but uh, we're not going to go over that because if your card has gotten to that point, you typically order a replacement SD card and um, have to change your uh, QNX and everything like that. So uh, just a, a quick uh, uh, tip or uh, maybe a bit of info is your uh, QNX actually exists on your SD card. And um, for those of you know, who know Niagara licensing is that uh, that is matched up with your serial, serial number. So um, another big no-no that people try to do is they actually try to move an SD card from one JS to another. It isn't going to work because the licensing isn't bound to that serial number. So uh, another thing, don't do that unless you are uh, going to be changing uh, licensing and you are you either have our help or you have access to Niagara licensing. So... Um, with all that being said, tools you're going to need for this is your uh, micro USB cable, like we did in our last uh, recovery video with the backup button. Um, and then you're going to need a uh, SD card reader, uh, micro SD card reader. So let's clarify, uh, JS8000 uses a micro SD card. And um, like my laptop has a uh, SD card reader in it, and so I need a uh, micro USB uh, adapter. And these typically come with a... Uh, SD card um, that can be purchased separately, uh, but usually someone always has one of these laying around. So um, first we're going to do is we're actually going to pop the JS off my uh, my DIN rail here, and we're going to um, open up the slot. So on the bottom of every JS, it's always the same. There's this little guy right here, and it just slides open. And if you look in there, you can just barely see the SD card, and we're going to just push in and it pops out. So we're going to set the JS down for right now. And for me, I'm going to plug this into my SD card adapter. And then I am going to plug that into my laptop. So just like that. All right. So as you can see, my computer has found my SD card. And we're going to go ahead and shrink that. All right, so now getting to the software side of things. Typically, the gold, what uh, Tritium refers to as the golden image is provided by Tritium. Um, now, as a contractor, you typically go through a distributor like us at Building Controls Group to uh, acquire this, or if you do have access to Niagara Central and software downloads, you can get it too. Um, some uh, brands have uh, their own golden image. Um, others don't. Um, in my experience, typically I have been able to put the Vicon image on a lot of SD card or a lot of JSs, regardless of brand, because it's it's pretty minimal. Um, you may not get all the features, but uh, so if you've got a JS that maybe has a proprietary network uh, protocol or something on it, you might just want to check with your manufacturer or your distributor to make sure you have the right image, um, as we were probably the best to, to help you determine that. So I have already downloaded the image. As you can see here on my desktop, I'm going to go ahead and open that folder. And so you're going to have three files in here. You're going to have your HDD raw copy. What this is, this is the actual program we're going to be using to write a uh, new image to that SD card that we took out of the JSE. Um, and here's the instructions, which is basically what we're doing right now. And then this is the actual SD card image that we'll be uh, writing to the SD card itself. So I have already installed this on my PC. Uh, so typically you would go through if you haven't done this before and install that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open that up. 
There we go right here. All right, so a little deceptive and I'm going to take you through this one step at a time because this is there's a lot of stuff going on here and I'm going to try to save you guys as much trouble as possible. So we've got this, you got all these different things going on here, right? Um, this is what we call the source file. So um, in our case, we're going to be looking for a file, not a physical drive. So at the very bottom, you see where it says file right here. We're going to double click on that. And it's going to take us to um, our folder. And since I've already done this, it already directed me right where I need to go. But this is the point where you would normally go to direct. Uh, you'd be looking for that SD Niagara image that we see right here. So we go ahead and select that. And then we want to hit count continue. Now, this we have to be very careful with because if you select the wrong drive here, you could potentially wreck your laptop or whatever device you're working on. So uh, use a lot of caution and I'll, I'll help you probably determine what you're looking for as best as I can because this will vary from uh, manufacturer to manufacturer, uh, whether it's the laptop, the SD card reader, this is not always the same what we're looking at here. Now, the way I'm able to determine that I'm looking at my SD card here, now it says PCI or Realtek PCI card reader. That, that's a good indicator that it's a card reader and I've, you know, plugged my uh, SD card in there and, um, you know, and typically the Niagara SD cards are four gigs. So look at that. We're at, you know, 3980. So that, that's four gigs. If you start seeing something like PCI SSD or WDC or something like that, those are typically internal drives. You do not want to image onto those because you will have big problems and a lot of headaches. So just don't do that. If you're not sure, call your local support, call us. We're always willing to, to, to check in and, and help you out through this process. So um, knowing that I know this is my SD card reader on my laptop, we're going to select it and we're going to hit continue. Now, basically, this is going to give you another warning saying that make sure you selected the right drive because if you don't, you're going to have a bad day. Um, so we're going to go ahead and hit start. And again, it's going to give you another warning letting you know, be careful what you're doing here. But we know we've selected the right source file and we're going to the right drive. So now we just hit yes and we're going to let it go. So depending on how fast your uh, SD card reader is, it can take uh, a matter of minutes, uh, maybe a little bit longer if it's an uh, older card reader. Uh, the USB ones typically take a little bit longer than the internal laptop ones like I'm using. So uh, as you can see, this is actually going pretty quick. So we're going to go ahead and let this run for a little bit. All right, so it looks like we are 100% complete. And you can see my computer has detected it again um, since the imaging is complete. So um, as far as uh, what we're doing on our PC, this pretty much wraps up this side of uh, imaging the SD card. And now we can go ahead and uh, remove it and plug it back into our JACE. So I'm going to unplug it from my computer. I'm going to pop it on my SD card holder. And we're going to go ahead and put it back into our JACE here. So. Again, I got that little slot. So typically, the little uh, little uh, Q and X here, or the um, code, always points towards the front of the JSO. So this being the front of your JSO, like this, it's gonna face forward like this. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that back in, and there we go. Close the door, and I'm gonna put it back on my test bench here. All right, so we got our SD card cable, or I'm sorry, our micro USB cable. Um, so uh, just like last time when we did the backup button restore, we're going to go ahead and pop that cover open on the front of the Jace, plug that cable in, and then I'm going to plug it back into my laptop over here, like so. All right, so simple as that. And we're going to go ahead and open up our favorite serial shell program and that's putty and if you remember last time uh, we went to find our com port through the management uh, device manager 
and let's go ahead and open that up. And we can see that my COM port is on COM, or my JSON is on COM5. So we're good there. So serial, COM5, and our baud rate is always 115,200. All right, so we got our session started here. And I'm going to go ahead and power up the JSON. And as you can see here, that looks good because it started giving us data right away. So typically, um, if things are all going well, this will just do a, 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 a image restore, just like the same process of when you hold the backup button down and, and do a factory reset via that method. Um, this is basically the same process. Uh, just so just be aware that uh, your IP address, your platform credentials and everything are going to go back to whatever your factory def uh, credentials are. Um, and that can depend on brand. As you can see on ours, it has changed our IP address back to um, 192.168.1.140. So that would be our primary port. Um, this would be a good time to uh, grab an Ethernet cable because uh, we're going to go ahead and test and make sure we can connect to this JS after this uh, image gets restored. So I'm going to do that right now. And so I just got my Ethernet cable here and I have plugged that into the primary port on my JS and I'm plugging that directly into my laptop. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my Adapter is set up for the right IP address. And as you can see, I have it set within the right scope. So that is all good. So while we were waiting for that, this thing has been in the process of uh, doing its restore factory reset. Um, this can take about five minutes or so like so um, as you can see we're actually pretty close now and we're actually at the point now where we can actually try to log in here All right, so we're logged in. Things are looking good. We haven't seen any errors that would stop this station from starting up. So let's go ahead and launch Workbench, and we're just going to go ahead and see if we can connect to this JSON. And I already have my credentials in there, so we're good. And if we've gotten to the screen, we're good. This means that this JSON has been successfully wiped back to factory credentials. This would be basically the exact same thing as pulling this thing brand new out of the box. And you can go ahead and do your commissioning, put your station back on, or whatever it is you intend on doing here going forward. So and that about covers it for this video. Um, as always, check out our website, buildingcontrolsgroup.com. A lot of great product and resources, um, and uh, a lot of tech. And also, uh, Nick and myself uh, offer technical support, as we like I'm doing in this video. So, uh, feel free to call in, and one of us will always be able to help you. Thanks for watching.